Greetings everyone. Today we are going to demonstrate our final year project that is comparative analysis of dual axis solar curve. Myself, Sefur Rahman, along with Asad Ali, we are going to show you that how we have done this. To proceed on that, we, there, here is some introduction of that. Actually, Earth has two types of motions. There is daily motion and annual motion. What is daily motion? Daily motion is actually the whole day. We experience it as a solar day and annual motion is, annual motion is that we experience it as a whole annual year. Based on that, there are two types of tracking systems, active, active tracking system and passive tracking system. Active tracking, in active tracking, tracking systems, the sunlight is used in more usable form. But in passive tracking system, the sunlight is directly used in more usable forms. So according to that, we have designed a, a dual axis solar tracking that moves along azimuthal axis and elevation axis. What is azimuthal axis? It is nothing but uh, it, is, it is nothing but the axis moving around the horizontal motion and elevation axis is nothing but the movement around the vertical directions. Going to that, what is the motivation of this project? Can you tell? <clears throat> today, today in modern world, organizations are going towards the clean, clean energies because day by day climate change occurs and pollution is increasing. So that's why people are moving towards the clean energy. And also clean energy is free and cost effective. But how people can achieve this? There a problem arises. Nowadays, we see that there are solar panels and renewable energies is coming. There are solar panels installed, but, it, but, but those are installed statically. In, in static solar panels, we cannot extract the maximum solar power. So in order to do that, to maximize our in utilization of solar energy, we have designed a solar tracking system that leads to our these objectives. <clears throat> the objective of our solar tracker, the objective was to design a solar tracker that can maximize the energy, utilization of energy and develop a prototype which can track the sunlight throughout the day. <coughs> and also we have designed a solar tracker which can be used in laboratory for lab purposes. The, how we have done this? These are the sim simulation parameters. On the right side, you can see that this is the mechanical design. This is the mechanical design. And on the right side, you can see these are the simulation parameters, the control circuitry, actually, we call it. That will control automatically. This mechanical design has two motors installed with gearbox system. The secondary gear has 114 tooth, and the, and the primary gear has 20 around, 20 around tooth. Basically, we have put this here uh, stepper motor but we have not actually in physically uh, in physical design we have not put here the stepper motor instead we have used uh, windshield wiper motor we can show you the details after uh, some slides this is the mechanical design and on the right side you can see there are four LDRs used for sunlight tracking and the resistivity along with the light striking and and on uh, based on that we have uh, connected Arduino which will uh, further further connects to the motor through edge bridge circuitry here is the detailed uh, the under simulation photo is the detailed simulation of a uh, complete control circuitry circuit. complete control circuitry which is controlled by edge bridge motor driver control see how we have done this you can show you in the flow chart so we have two types of uh, motions one is azimuthal control motion which is horizontal motion and another is elevation control which is vertical motion so you can see here there is a flow <coughs> chart for both horizontal motion and for vertical motion the horizontal motion is east and west ldrs we have placed four ldrs you can see in the previous slide that we have used here four ldrs so two ldrs are responsible for vertical motion and two ldrs are responsible for horizontal motion so here you can see the LDRs which are responsible for horizontal motion are east and west. So here I can uh, explain the flow of, of our system that how it works. <coughs> so for horizontal motion, when LDR, east LDR is high, it means east LDR is uh, getting light. So the motor move towards the east side, so the west LDR also will get light. And if it is false that both are low or both are high, then it goes towards to check either west LDR is getting high light. If west LDR is getting light, so it will move, the motor will move towards the west side. And if it is not 
getting light so both the motor stops it means either both motor uh, both ldrs are getting light or both are not getting light so this is the horizontal motion control same uh, similarly vertical motion is same but here north and south ldrs are placed so flow of the both uh, motors for horizontal and vertical motors are same so in order to summarize all that actually we have used uh, this is the whole block diagram of the uh, our working mechanism of dual axis solar tracker you can see there are two ldrs used four, four ldrs used two ldrs are uh, are responsible for horizontal and two ldrs are responsible for vertical motion these two ldrs are, are then followed by are then connected to the end comparator comparator is nothing but there uh, there is ir sensor that will work on the work on the uh, light sensitivity and resistivity if any mismatch occurs the comparator will tell the microcontroller and then microcontroller will uh, give the signal in in high or low form to the motor driver circuitry that is h bridge circuitry and hence the h bridge will uh, move the word move the respective motor accordingly so as Saifur Rahman mentioned earlier that first we have selected the stepper motor but uh, stepper motor has less torque that's why we selected a windshield wiper motor which have torque of 40 newton meter but this torque is not enough for our project we need around 200 newton meter torque so that's why we have selected the gears as <coughs> gears as, uh, as Saifur Rahman earlier mentioned that the secondary gear has 114 teeth and the primary gear has 20 teeth so here, so here is the calculation uh, based on this calculation we will <coughs> getting 228 newton meter torque 200 newton meter is the minimum torque which is required which is known as low torque and uh, the 28 newton meter torque is the acceleration torque so uh, our speed uh, will be 5.26 revolutions per minute based on these uh, gear ratio selection you can see this is the mechanical design we uh, actually uh, prepared, implemented, and uh, after 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 complete uh, demonstration and after complete simulation parameter, here is the mechanical structure we got from mechanic. You can see there's the horizontal the motion and the vertical motion. This is the pre-testing, and after that we have tested in in a real sunlight. But as you can see, we have designed this uh, in flow chart. We have designed it for laboratory purpose, and we are striking a light. But here, you can see we have installed it on, on terrace of our department. And here, the working of LDRs is actually inverse of the flow chart. How it is inverse? Here, whenever the shadow will occur on an LDR, the whole solar, uh, whole solar panel frame will move accordingly. That is either vertically or either horizontally. In, but in laboratory, we have designed it in a way that whenever we, we will strike a light, and it will move. As you can see here in... Uh, our real real time testing on uh, on the terrace of our department. You can see, you can see, you can see the uh, shadow shadow over here that uh, actually we got in a video of uh, one hour, and we have time lapsed it and, and compressed it into uh, some few seconds or some uh, one of the minutes. Coming to the next, these are the results in discussions. <laughs> These are the tables of our results which we have uh, take readings when we were testing on our uh, on uh, terrace of our department. So these, uh, this column is the fixed solar power column and this is for the single axis and this is for the dual axis. So you can see uh, these are uh, readings based on the time from 8 am to 6 pm. So initially when sun rises uh, the fixed solar power is less as compared to single axis and dual axis solar tracker and uh, during midday when uh, sun is uh, at the center so all three fixed single and dual has uh, uh, same almost same readings because they are receiving maximum light during midday but when the sun set uh, the single axis oh, sorry fixed axis solar tracker receive uh, less power as compared to single and dual but max, uh, dual axis solar tracker power receives maximum light this is the table of uh, efficiency table in fixed axis uh, we get 21.56 uh, percent efficiency uh, for single axis we get 22.62 percent efficiency and for dual axis we get 24.5 percent efficiency so now next uh, this is the uh, chart of our uh, uh, table which uh, which is mentioned in 
previous slide. So the blue ones are the fixed solar power, the red ones are the single axis solar power and the green ones are the dual axis solar power. So you can see the green uh, building blocks are the maximum uh, in magnitude as compared to single axis and uh, fixed axis and uh, also fixed axis is the minimum building blocks as compared to others. So uh, these are the results and now so Sefer Rahman will further elaborate. Upon uh, going through some readings and testing, we came up with the conclusion that uh, that fixed mount panel has an efficiency of 21.56% uh, and uh, for single axis solar tracker we have efficiency of 22.62 while the dual axis solar tracker is 24.5% of efficiency. These all are the readings of 30 watt solar panels that has open circuit voltages of 21.2 voltages and a short circuit current has uh, 2.1 amperes. According to these uh, these uh, ratings, our solar panel, uh, we have designed this solar panel, and this is the efficiency results of that solar panel. For uh, other and uh, these results and this mechanical structure may vary with the uh, whole physical place of the environment. Furthermore, these results are taken when we have implemented a DC fan as a load to with our solar tracker. That leads to what we can do in future work. We can design various MPPT methods and algorithms to make, maximize efficiency and improve load carrying capacity. Along with that, we can uh, we can benefit with uh, a better mechanical structure from it. And sensors can be uh, modified by repositioning of this. Now, repositioning after that. The, here are some references we got from the idea and we got the help from. You can see and you can go through all that. Today we will demonstrate on the final year project competitive analysis of dual axis of solar panel. So this is our hardware. In physically when we implement it, so it works when the sunlight does not strike any one of the LDRs. But now we are testing it in lab, so that's why we reverse the coding. So when this light does not strike any one, two or three LDRs, then it will work. So let's move and check that how it works. First, we have given number these LDRs actually based on the Arduino pins. This LDR is connected to Arduino pin number 2, 3, 4 and 5. So we are now test Arduino, oh sorry, LDR 2. So we can see that when light strikes on LDR number 2, then how it works. So you can see when the light strikes on LDR number 2, it moves horizontally and it clockwise. So when it moves horizontally anti-clockwise, so both the LDR number 2 and 4 will receive light. So when both receive light, then what happens? So when both the LDRs 2 and 4 receive light, so our solar tracker moves vertically anti-clockwise. And all of the LDRs 2, 3, 4, 5 will receive light and both the motor stops running. So now we move towards the next LDR, LDR number 3. So we look when light strikes on LDR number 3, then how it works. So when light strikes on LDR number 3, so our solar, solar panel moves clockwise vertically. So when it moves vertically clockwise, both the LDR 3 and 2 receives light. So when both receives light, so when both receives light, our solar panel moves anti-clockwise horizontally and all of the uh, LDRs will receive light and both motor stops running. So now we move towards the next LDR, LDR number 4 and look that when light strikes on LDR number 4 then how it works. So when light strikes on LDR number 4 it moves vertically anti-clockwise. When it moves anti-clockwise vertically both the LDR 4 and 5 will receive light and both are receiving light when both are receiving light in their number 4 and 5, our solar panel moves horizontally clockwise. So all of the LDRs 2, 3, 4, 5 will receive light and motor stops running because they have an equal potential. Now we move to our final LDR, LDR number 5 and look at how it works when light strikes on LDR number 5. So when light strikes on number, uh, LDR number 5, it moves horizontally anti-clockwise. So when it moves horizontally anti-clockwise, sorry, clockwise, both the LDRs 5 and 3 will receive light. So when both are receiving light, 
So when both LDR3 and 5 receives light, it moves vertically clockwise. So all of the LDRs will receive light and have equal potential. So both the motors stops running. So this is the demonstration of our final year project that how it works. Actually, this is a lab-based uh, testing. When we go out under the sun and test it, so we reverse the coding. So whenever the light does not strike any one of the LDR, so it will work according to the, the control given by the, our controller. Thank you.